Well, I am privileged today to have a friend and a filmmaker here, Colin Everett, who's a graduate of Compass College and Visual Arts. Oh, Cinematic Arts. And Cinematic Arts, uh -huh. as well as a celebrated filmmaker. Uh, Colin, you just recently won an award here at CCTV, 45th Parallel Award for a film. Is that correct? That is correct. That was uh, sometime in October. That's the annual... Annual, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, sixth or seventh year, I think, that they did it. Um, but I submitted a film and, and won in my category. There were like 12 different categories, and one of mine won. So. It's actually a pretty funny story about this submission. Uh, tell us how this happened. I, uh, well, I've been building a rapport with them for, uh, for the summer, and I saw that they were promoting 45th Film uh, uh, Festival. So I went on there and tried to submit my film that I had directed in film school uh, for, it actually has a crazy story, um, like we got robbed, we got chased by meth heads during the making of this. Of during trip. the making of the film? Yeah, uh, during the making of the film. That's great. And um, so that was the one that I wanted to submit, but because I had also made another film with friends it was a 48 hour film festival oh, right. that was attached to the same account that the 45th film festival was right so the film that i actually ended up paying 20 dollars and submitting was not the one that i intended it wasn't the one you had originally meant in yeah the one you were robbed by yeah, methods <laughs> exactly that's the one that i wanted to submit and still haven't yet to to cctv and what was uh, the film that you did submit the film that I did submit was um, it was made in 48 hours um, from time of uh, I, uh, conception of idea to to um, execution of it editing posting it online was was 48 hours and that film have you seen it uh, the one you submitted to the the film festival yes uh, yes I saw it okay Great. all right um, uh, so that film was... That film was probably made four years ago, and it's it's a comedy. It has dance in it. It has a dance training montage. It's very very silly. <laughs> um, but I was I was um, very honored uh, to win the award uh, with my friend, and it reunited a, a friend of mine who was in the film. We hadn't seen each other in like three years, so it was a really cool. Um, so uh, before we jump on to the next topic, I want to ask you tell me about the process of the creative filmmaking like how did you you had 48 hours mm -hmm. in this assignment to make a film yeah. which is the one you submitted and won for the 45th um, parallel yes. film festival mm -hmm. how did that work for you how did you guys come up with a film a concept execution in 48 hours how long was it what was the process so I think initially they gave us a prop a name and an occupation okay. and they said go with it you got 48 hours. Okay, so they actually gave you something to seed with. Yeah. It's almost like these cooking shows, and they say you have to use this ingredient or these ingredients to yeah. make a dish. You were given a name. Mm -hmm. Was it the name of a character or a name of uh, just a name? It was a name of a character, Yorgoth uh, something. Yorgoth. Uh, so, you, so you had to put Yorgoth in the film. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a prop what was the prop. Prop was a bag. Just a bag. a bag, like a duffel bag. Yeah, your golf, a bag, and what was the other one? Um, uh, occupation. And what uh, was the occupation? Dentist. 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 So was your golf the dentist? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, your golf's dad wants him to be a dentist. He wants to be a dancer. And there's a bag somewhere in right. the film. I think uh, he pulls a bandana and puts it on himself like Rambo, yeah. something like that. Um, so that was we we had probably twelve people in the writing room. It costs like 150 bucks. Wow. Um, so the story of the 48-hour film festival that I submitted to one for was actually like is a great story too, um, just of collaboration and um, we dwindled it down like we started with probably 12 people and then that went into like seven people actually going on set and making this, um, not including actors. That was right. probably more people, and then there were maybe. In post production, like two people working on it, and then they submitted it. And you're saying from concept day one mm -hmm. to filming mm -hmm. through post, yeah. 
48 hours. That's all. Yeah. So what did, tell me more about that timeline. How did that, did you sleep? Yes. Yes, we did. We, when we, the, the clock starts, we went probably the next six hours writing. And then I think, I think, I think it was just like, okay, we're going to bed because it was nighttime. We met in the evening, and then it was nighttime. So then, you know, we sleep probably six to eight hours. Okay. Go up and meet at the park for the training montage. Um, sorry, no, we actually met at the school early in the morning. We met at the school. And then we went to the park in the afternoon, shot the rest at, the, at my house at night, and then... Um, and then uh, post production took the rest the next that, day. That was it. Mm -hmm. huh? That's really amazing. And this wasn't the film you got chased by meth heads. That's a different. That's film. a different. One. Okay. That, yeah, you yeah. want to tell that story quickly? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, we're shooting a film. It's Life actually, of a filmmaker, right? It's good. It's actually very dramatic. I would still love for CCTV to see this. Yeah. Um, I intend on submitting it to, uh, to them soon, and even to the film festival come October. But that story. Okay, so, um, pardon me while I, that story, it was for a entering second semester. My friends and I were chosen in a group, actually. Um, we went up and had to write on a whiteboard all the different groups, and, and I was kind of with a dream team of mine. We were really excited, and we didn't want to use the red camera, which was what the school was um, wanting us to use, $60,000 camera. We wanted to use a Black Magic, um, sorry, no, uh, A7S. That's what we wanted to use, A7S and, and because... What's, just quickly tell, what's the difference between the red camera and the A7S? So the A7S does extremely well in low lighting. You can pick up stars. Right, okay, okay. Uh, red camera, you cannot. You cannot, okay. Uh, red camera... Um, does do well in, in low, but it really like it needs this type of lighting needs light. to do to do. It's well. a great camera, but not the one you need it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we wanted our film to be shot uh, to be dark, but to be visible, to be um, to have a very specific look to it. So that was only three thousand dollar camera, but we could rent it from a off um, right. company. So they loan us the camera. The school fights us on it. They're like, use the red, use the red. And we're like, no, no, no. Thank God that we didn't use their camera right? because in the neighborhood that we were shooting in that I lived in we shot it around my house in my house um, off we, we shot in two different parking lots but the one that we did shoot in I remember we wrapped at like 4.30 in the morning right and people had been watching us people around the neighborhood I remember this um, specific car that sat there they drove up and sat there with people in the car and they just like watched us and we're like what is that car doing and then they drove off so it could have been them but we wrapped we go up to my house you have to go upstairs through the and my buddy leaves his car unlocked with all the camera the computer the um, camera that you rented all of our footage three thousand and the footage yeah oh, all man. the beautiful footage from that day oh, it was God. like a nine ten hour day yeah and we lost everything. And um, we had to tell the teachers right away of my school. Um, it cost my buddy $3,000, 3500 Oh, my God. I had to start a Kickstarter to for pay, him, him a GoFundMe or whatever, just to, like, help him pay rent and get it. You oh, know, and, wow. Um, that was devastating to him. Um, but we would have lost the red camera, um, I really oh, think. Oh, yeah. We would have lost the red the camera. The $60,000 camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So we went back and shot my entire film in a 16-hour day. Okay. And it turned out to be, I think, there were 11 films in that whole yep. rest of that semester. Mine was... And what was the name of this film? Pretty yeah. up there, Trip. Trip. And I want to say, uh, for the record, I've seen Trip. And again, the, the video uh, URL will be in the description. This is an amazing film. You have to watch it. And I want to ask you, actually, for part of that film, uh, specifically the ending scene, is really amazing. For sure. And I know you and I had a conversation, so once you watch the film, you'll understand the question I'm going to ask. But the mo the motivation of, of your characters, like, 
do you develop them throughout? Do you build a history for them, who they are, how they got there, why they're doing what they're doing? Is that kind of understood by all the writers and all the people that are filming? And yes. Some of the motivations I don't share. But at least I know them. You know them. Mm -hmm. oh, and you directed this. Mm -hmm. okay. I did. My, my friend wrote it, uh, who also shot and edited it. So he, he gets just as much credit for the direction of this. Right. It was total collaboration. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Joe Miller. Joe Joseph Miller. Miller. Okay. Joseph Miller. Yeah. Back. So mm -hmm. this, this film, Trip, actually, and I've seen a number of little short films that, that you've done mm -hmm. and some of your stand-up. For those of you who don't know, Colin also performed stand-up and was leading as well a, um, we call it a comedy night at a local bar in Michigan. I'm going to... Am I saying that right? Kind of organized and brought people talent in, yeah. as well as himself to do stand up. And if you get a chance to ever see Colin do stand up here in Salem, you certainly should go see him. But I've seen some of your stand up. I've seen some some of your movies, and I have to say, Trip is probably my favorite. Some of the ways you shot that, some of the scenes. Um, one of the things that just me, I, I personally experienced in watching it, is this: the sense where the camera just kind of stays still. Uh, there's not a lot of movement of the camera and, and, and you're just kind of catching the character in conversation with expressions, interacting with either an object or w with people. Mm. Is that a fair characterization of some of that movie? Yeah. 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 Um, I wanted the film to be very monotone about what it was displaying mm. because it's pretty heavy. It's heavy film. It's a heavy, uh, it's a heavy movie. And... It's about 12 minutes, yeah. and to tell um, kind of two stories mm. in one. I, you know, that's a good point. I hadn't mm -hmm. thought of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Showing them before this meet time, and they're just going to this meeting. In the second half of the movie, um, it's actually most of the movie is in that car. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, is that something, when I think of movie making, is I, and I experience a movie as a viewer... And I look back and I go, well, that's interesting. You're right. I didn't even realize most of the movie's in the car. Does that come as a result of careful planning and intention? Or is it something that happens on the set and you go, oh, this should really not move from the scene. This is where it's happening. Mm. A little bit of both. Or what's the process? That happens in the location scout. Location scouts are so important because we... We, in my house, we thought, okay, we want a, um, what do you call those? Um, put them on the wall like a, a tapestry. We okay. wanted a tapestry, a, a tapestry of a skull with a bright light on it. Right. Or we want to take all the, the light bulbs out of this room and put red LED light bulbs in right. it. Um, or put the red LED uh, in the lamp. We need a, a zoom, I think it's called a zoom, um, a little microphone, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but we just sit on the table um, so we could get the slap. Um, you know, those type of things were all... Right, the slap, yeah. All done beforehand. I forgot about the slap. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The slap. <laughs> we did that, we we did that probably 16 times. The slap? Yeah, you know, and it was real. Yeah, it was, was it real slap? Okay. It was, and the, and the actor uh, who slapped the actress, he, he did not want to do it but the actress was like let's go <laughs> she was so yeah she was like I've done it in theater and you know so um, 16 times was, ain't nothing dude yeah. <laughs> yeah she did ask for an intermission to like ice yeah. her cheek but, oh uh, yeah yeah it was it was at times um, a hard really hard film to make and continue on with because um, I didn't even talk about the being chased by methods and stuff yet right. that was that was uh, that was day two that was day two. That was uh, two a week and a half later when we shot it in sixteen hours. I was going to ask you. So it wasn't you weren't chased the first time you got mm -hmm. stolen from. We were just robbed. But the second time. Yeah. You said we're not going to be robbed again, so you ran. Yes. Yeah. Was it the same folks? Uh, I'm could curious. be. You don't know. Uh, we saw. Okay, so we're shooting in the car. There's like yeah. six of us, and all of a sudden, pro the, probably the scariest image I've ever seen live. Mm was was this um this lady who walked up to our car and she had like ponytails that were kind of like, kind of like scraggly and she had a flashlight and she, I think she saw us and got a little spooked 
and and we were we were it was in the middle of a take and we were very scared and then she went around looking in other cars so we just observed her in this parking lot and she opened she did open a car and she grabbed stuff and she walked off wow and actually that you found a great location for the film though absolutely yeah get the environment fun. we really captured the environment Pick the right environment <laughs> yeah and i just want to say for the folks who'll see this film i love the ending it's a subtle touch yeah. with the people walking through the um, yeah. the parking lot, but I thought that was amazing. Yeah. And I'm not even sure why I thought it was amazing, sure. to be honest. I just, I, I noticed it when I saw it for the mm -hmm. first time, and I loved it. I was like, mm -hmm. what a great way to segue away from the scene. Yeah. It's good. How when long we, have... Oh, when we showed it in my school for it to get, like, for the first time, a couple of my uh, classmates uh, stood up and clapped. Oh, yeah. They were, you know... So good. Yeah, it's... So good. Yeah. You really have to watch this if you haven't uh, seen the film yet. Please, please watch it. Um, Colin, I want to ask you, how old were you when you thought you might want to pursue film? Do you remember, was there an age, or did it happen quite naturally, or did, was there a moment that you went, oh, I'm, I'm a filmmaker at heart? Mm. I remember writing my first feature script. It was horrible, but I wrote my first feature at eight. I, eight. I just was on the computer... Uh, the formatting was completely wrong. Of course, you're eight years you know, old, yeah. obviously. But could you type at eight? That's amazing. Oh yeah, you could type at eight. Oh yeah, I did type yeah. till I was like sixteen. No way. <laughs> I mean, real typing, right? Wow. I just want to say this: is the earliest I've ever heard anyone type, eight wow. years old. Okay, yeah. so did you use a program, or was it just on paper, like I think a word? Just word. And you just had a script written out. Yeah, I remember. So, what was the story? Do you remember? Um. Uh, uh, Cops Night Out was the title. Cops Night Out. Uh -huh. <laughs> you Cops better make it into a film one day. That's <laughs> yeah. so great. Yeah. <laughs> Cops Night Out. I love it. <laughs> so at a, at a pretty young age, you were already thinking in terms of like film and yeah. seeing seeing life in terms of cinematic mm -hmm. events. And everybody, every character in my script was um, selected, was handpicked. Right. I wanted that to be Ethan. I wanted that to be Steven. I wanted that to be Danny, you know. Yeah, um, right. And so I was already thinking in terms of, like, collaborating with yeah. peers. Yeah. So that um, has, has really only ever continued and picked up as I've gained knowledge. Obviously, I'm 24 now, so. Now, one thing that's come up a lot in this interview is collaboration. You really love that artistic collaboration process yeah. with people. It's both inspiring to you, and I think you probably really like to inspire other people mm. as well. Mm. I take those collaboration moments home with me. Mm. Um, I take them home, and I can I can be high from that experience for the next couple of days. It's that's yeah. all I talk about. Yeah, it you lights know? you up, man. Mm -hmm. it that's really so does. Good. So just briefly before we end, I hate to ask the stereotypical questions, mm. but I got to ask a few because they're interesting. What are some of your favorite films that you would say, um, you know, everyone has a very personal sense mm -hmm. of their favorite films. It's not always the incredible color palette or, or you know, like um, some people like really epic movies, you know, yeah. like, like the English Patient, there's yeah. war movies. Mm -hmm. And some people like really artsy indie and it's not about technical issues very or small. color. Very small. But, but for you, what are some of your favorite films and, and, and why? So... I think the first, I think just like top favorite movie is Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. I absolutely, I can watch that um, at any given point uh, with anybody. Yeah, yeah. And I, I will defend it. Um, I've heard people just straight up say, I really don't like Nightcrawler. And I'm like, dude, I cannot be friends with you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, That's with uh, Rene Russo and... Um Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal, and he plays an amazing character in Nightcrawler. Yes. I mean, he really, he, he's he's a, a great actor. Yeah. He, he owns that creepy character. Absolutely. So well. Lost the weight for it. Yeah. He wanted to describe his character as a wolf. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you like about it? Like, when you dr are drawn to a film like that, what is it that, that wakes you up inside? Um, the first thing I'll say is uh, Dan Gilroy. That was his first movie. Okay. <laughs> and he, his other films that have come out after that have been good, but nothing like Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler yeah. He just, he knew exactly what he was doing mm -hmm. when he made Nightcrawler. Every frame of that film is intentionally put there. Mm -hmm. 
It is. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. I loved it. Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, by the way. dude. I saw it. Uh, what else did you like about it? The, the, you, you like the director, mm. and you like the intentionality of it. Mm-hmm. Um, That's also behind with the with the dialogue too. The dialogue. Okay. The dialogue um, takes away my breath sometimes. Oh. It's so intense for me. I feel like I I'll never forget being in the theater, watching some of those scenes with um, with Renee or with yeah. uh, uh, Riz Ahmed. Yeah, Riz right. Ahmed. Right. Um, really reminds me of my brother Kobe right in the film so I think that's why I just like intake him right so much um, his what I view as insecurity in my brother I also view as insecurity in this guy he just plays it so realistically plays it and so perfectly <laughs> yeah his, his storyline <laughs> is heartbreaking for me yeah. and I love the character I don't want to give anything yeah. away in case people haven't seen it yeah but he's amazing in that film and he's just a dude wanting to make money yeah. And he finds this guy who's promoting this as like, he's saying we, like we yeah. are company, you know, right. it's just him. It's just him, yeah. Yeah, but the, yeah, his his storyline with um, with Jake Gyllenhaal's character is just heartbreaking. So what's interesting is a couple times that we've talked movies, uh, writing comes to the surface often, like, um, and, and maybe this is really intrinsic to, to the industry, but with you I've heard a lot more than say with other people I've talked with that the dialogue and the writing like really resonates with you Mm -hmm. is that something when you write films that you really focus on a lot is um, not just the cinematic effects or the the, the visuals of it but the actual human interaction that's going on yes not only when I'm writing but even when I'm watching Um, I just heard in an interview somebody talking about Robert De Niro's ability to take even bad dialogue off of the page and make it sound as natural as I'm talking to you right now. And that is a hard, that is actually a difficult thing to do. Um, not everybody can do it. I'm going to take right. these words off of this page. You should try it sometime. Oh, At yeah. home, you should, you should really find a script, something, and try to read the words as if it's genuinely coming oh, from okay. me. That is a difficult thing to do. I haven't done that, but I will tell you my wife was asking me once why I liked Eminem the rapper. Sure. And so one time I put one of his songs on the TV and I gave her the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. And my wife rapped to Eminem. Oh. But it was amazing. Oh, yeah. She became a fan. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, like, I like what you're saying. So um, real quick, um, Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. Just name two or three others. You'd say, hey, the, these hit me hard. You should see them. American Beauty is one American that I Beauty. will never um, let go film. of. It's good. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, for many different reasons that I won't get into now, but um, and uh, Black Swan. Oh, Black Swan. Black yeah. Swan is just like mm-hmm. it touches my soul every mm-hmm. time that I watch that movie. I love it. I am, I am so in sway with the main oh, character yeah. every time that I watch that movie. Pulled into that one. Yeah, dude. It's good. Absolutely. So Nat Crawler, American Beauty, Black Swan. Black Swan. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Colin, it has been a privilege, uh, sheer pleasure. To have you on today. Thank, Thank you. you so much, man.